Speaking of stuff I like, should we check out this Corey Gaming video? Did you guys watch it yet? It's great. I, You know what scared me is when he uploaded this video. I've been working on an idea, and I thought this video was going to be that. And I was like, damn it. He beat me there. Like, he took the idea I was going to make, and then he beat me there. But then it was like it went on a different path. So I was like, okay. But I figured we should check out and watch the video. I usually like watching this with my stream, mostly because I think they're fun to talk about. And because why not? I like supporting Gerald's stuff. In fighting games, some characters have an alternate stance which can change their moveset and abilities in the middle of a match. But Lei Wulong has 13 stances. He has more stances than games have characters, but it's not as simple as just learning more moves. He also transitions in and out of different stances depending on what attacks he uses and even the direction he moves. People have mapped out extensive flowcharts to help players wrap their heads around what's essentially a Jackie Chan simulator. I did not know this was a thing. Like, I didn't know someone made a diagram of all the transitions that Lei has. This, I feel like this looks way more complicated than how it is. I feel like actually learning it is not this complex, but like, you know, it's really funny how this looks. How can anyone remember all this? Why can't these games just have like six characters with a few moves each? Like chess. In chess, you can quickly learn the rules. There are no DLC pieces that throw air fireballs. And but what if there was, though? You know, I played some chess. Like, what if there was a ca Like, just hear me out. But if you want to get into chess because you hate remembering things, you might be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Recognizing positions is how chess players flex. Yeah, uh, this looks an awful lot like uh, Tal Botvinnik. Accessible or not, new players in chess are going to be extremely behind. Do you know about the Sicilian defense? If not, then you have a lot of catching up to do because people knew about that in 1594. Uh oh. In Korean gamer slang, these old games people have gotten really good in are called Koinmur games. This is such a cool name, by the way. It kind of reminds me of like a degenerate way to, to talk about old games that people have mastered to like an, a sort of like ridiculous degree. This is a, an old game that these motherfuckers just cannot stop playing. And it's longtime players are Koinmul, which literally translates to standing water. Standing Stale water. water that never moves on, becoming more and more toxic to anything that dares enter it. <laughs> Fossil this fuel? always stop new people from getting into these games. Chess has been played for centuries, Brood War has become a national pastime, and new players have come to slay the gods in NBC2 and Melee. This is a big conversation though. Particularly, I mean, like people talk about this with a lot of fighting games, but particularly with a game like Melee, right? It is a hard sell. You're like, okay, so... Everybody who's good at this game has been playing this game since before you were alive. And they've been getting good at it and improving at it all the time. And not only that, it's their job to be the best at it. So, you ready to get in and play? And you're just like, what? These fucking old boomers? They've been playing this goddamn game since how long? What is the appeal of these stale water games where everyone is super good? And why do people keep playing them? And it looks like... <laughs> this oh pop Groundhouse? with the game one wow. pop-ups. Well, some people want to practice or study things in a game to get good. For this to be possible, the things to practice or study must be proven to be good. These established techniques and strategies include footsies, Korean backdash, the queen's gambit, muta micro, infinites, or whatever. Magic creator Richard Garfield refers to these players as honers. Honers don't care that the Sicilian defense was discovered in the 16th century. They just want to study openers to get better at chess. They don't care that the perfect nine dart finish has been calculated and achieved. They just want to practice their aim so they can do it themselves one day. But while those two examples are about honing, one is about muscle memory and the other is about memory memory. It's funny, Chad, because as always, th these videos cover lots of different things, right? They cover a lot of different games and topics and ideas, but they are really, the nice thing about them is they're so malleable in what they can apply to, right? I'm sure many of you immediately understand what it's like to be a honer. Somebody said D5 here is better. See, this is what I mean. You guys are fucking nerds. You can pretty quickly tell where you're categorized in this video, I think, like where you end up and why you find these things interesting. The idea that like the reason you would want to get into old games or any game like this is that they're proven to be worth getting good at, right? They have tons and tons and tons of people who grind and play them, have shown what the highest level can 
look like if you're interested in achieving it and that level is worthy of the grind it's not like a new game or title that like you're not sure if your skills are going to be rewarded or not when a patch comes out or something changes games like this are set in stone you know what they're going to be like today tomorrow next week next year right the only thing that advances them or pushes them forward is the players themselves rather than like some outside force in other words execution and knowledge Honers like video games because you get to hone both in unique ways. Mm -hmm. You can nerd out about the properties of champions and weapons, but also flex your actions per minute or aim. Bam. But honers don't want to practice or study because repeating something over and over is a good time. They must also gain a meaningful advantage for doing so. This is called leveling up. Like most fighting games, Street Fighter 3 has combos that require varying levels of practice to pull off. The idea is the more practice you put in. Can I say this is such a smart way, like using this meme to show people who don't know about fighting games, like these are the different, like, you know, levels of combos. This is so smart. And the better combos you can do, improving your potential for damage and positioning. If you master the frame perfect Kara Fukiyage input with Makoto, you get to kill most characters with one combo. Stay What sets this game apart execution-wise is that there's also a defensive system like this, the infamous universal parry mechanic. Just tap forward right before you get hit or down if it's a low hit. Works in the air too, where blocking doesn't. Of course, the timing is a bit strict. If you mess up, you just get hit. But like most games, you can also just hold back the block, which requires no timing at all. Parrying has so many benefits. You never take damage, you hold your ground, and it increases the chances of a guaranteed punish. Mm -hmm. So how good can you get at parrying? The music. Theoretically, you could parry every hit and become strike invincible. I'm strike invincible. In, the more you can parry. I've been strike invincible at least 17 times in my life. But what makes this so honable is that there are so many levels. Chun's super art here requires 15 timed inputs to do a full parry. That's 15 places to potentially mess up and 15 levels you need to beat to be successful. With hold back to block, there is only one level. You must practice the rhythm of your opponent's attacks to level up your parry. Yeah, none of you will practice an IB, huh? For the honer, a long journey just means more to level up, more advantage to gain, and more milestones to achieve. And the payoff for reaching a goal is reflected by how much practice it took to get there. But in Third Strike, there's an even harder parry called the Red Parry. A Red Parry is when you do a parry even while in blocking animation, but the timing window is only 2 frames or 1 30th of a second, which is 5 times stricter than a standard parry. It wasn't some weird exploit players figured out, but a purposefully designed mechanic in a mainstream gaming franchise. For the setup. Is it enough? Just... Is it enough? He buried them all we got it! So the question is, can you give players too much of an advantage for practicing execution? This is, I think, one of the more interesting parts of the video to me. That's something that I think gets a lot of people interested in fighting games and simultaneously pushes a lot of people away. The idea that, like, this person has practiced too much. I'm not, I can't beat him. A lot of people feel the opposite in the idea that, like, I want to achieve this great power. I think as Infill brings up, and he talks about it in here, no matter what you do to make it so that the grind rewards someone less and less, legacy skills of honers or just the innate like honer mindset will make them better anyway. It's like almost impossible to not make that the case. They will optimize everything that you give them if they're interested in it. It doesn't matter what it is. But what about getting too good by studying knowledge? Lei and his 13 stance flowchart isn't going to study itself, and many modern fighters give you a huge advantage for understanding frame data. And the difference between knowing and not knowing is often a matter of life and death. So, can players get too much of an advantage for studying a game? Chess Grandmaster Bobby Fischer thought so. Good old Bobby Fischer. Pretty late in chess. chess has been played hundreds of years, so there isn't really that much left that's radically new. You know, it's interesting that the knowledge check situation was shown there, like the 10 string and Tekken or whatever. The the thing is, is like this combination is what makes fighting games so interesting. And most, most video games and most competitive things interesting, right? Decision making and like execution, right? Handling things, using your hands and your brain and, and studying and practicing stuff all the time and in your accumulated knowledge over time. 
And like putting those two things together, particularly putting those two things together within fast, snappy moments is like the impressive part of fighting games that most people stick around for. Fisher went on to make a new variation of chess where the starting position of the back row pieces will be randomized each game. Black's pieces always mirror white's to keep it fair, and this results in 960 possible starting positions, hence the name Chess 960. This fresher version of chess allows chess honer's skills to still be relevant by keeping the same pieces and abilities, but the new starting positions provide something for people who are tired of honing and want to come up with new strategies. In other words, innovate. Innovators are players who want to figure out new strategies in a new game. In the purest sense, they want to keep finding solutions to unique problems. But once practice and study are required, they will find it a chore and either move on to another game or change the rules. Does this sound familiar, chat room? Are you already like, uh-oh? <laughs> Before your scrub alarm goes off, realize you have likely played games with house rules or made some yourself. But while you and your friends can easily change rules within yourselves, it's much harder in a coded game with a competitive community. This is where balance patches, new characters, and new iterations of the game come in to make more room to innovate. More viable matchups and new mechanics means more strategies to come up with. But change the game too much and too often, and it becomes something the honer did not sign up for. As a matter of fact, in- I could tell that was personal. <laughs> Speedrunning, one of the honingest activities ever, the game's rules must remain the same if beating a record by a few seconds is to matter. A game meant for pure innovators might need to be difficult to hone or unhonable. But when someone finds a way to hone it in anyways, the game becomes something the innovator did not sign up for. This is, I think, the point that was getting made earlier about fighting games, which, and on all games really, right? Which is, if you try to make a game that, like, no matter how much effort you put into getting good at it, like, you know, it, it's invalidated in some way. So it's like, it's impossible. And you'll probably end up making a bad game for it. You can't stop them. People will get good at maximizing and optimizing and becoming good at a mini game. People will optimize and become the absolute best at doing everything. And even if you try to make it so that there's less and less and less and less and less and less things to hone and get good at, then the innate skill level of the two players are, is still going to shine through because, well, one of them is good at fighting games and experience and the other one is not. And even if there's less skills to hone, like the honer will figure out and solve the game quicker. And they're like, yep, get owned. Get this honed. This game has been out for like, what, a week? Just one week. And people are this try hard. You love to see it. But just because a game starts to require practice doesn't mean there's nothing more to innovate. I love that clip. It just means you have to practice or study to get to the innovating part. Bobby Fischer is often cited for his bold and creative plays, but he was also studying chess 14 hours a day. The problem with Koimu games is that the only people innovating are the ones that have already done a ton of honing. You know, it's pretty funny that like Zane gets used twice, right? One to show to be shown as like someone new who is like honing one of these older Stillwater games and then shown again to say like, hey, there's this old man here honing for years and years and years and still innovating, still coming up with new stuff to be even new people coming around. For the better or worse, fighting games have a reputation of being a honers genre because from the start, it's extremely obvious that there's a lot to practice and a lot to study. So the question for devs making modern fighting games is how do we get players to the innovating part faster? One approach is to provide excellent study materials, but this doesn't eliminate the need to study. Yeah. You can remove or eliminate things that require practice, but honers will have less to hone and innovator types will get steamrolled anyways because you can't remove honed legacy skills like footsies unless you go turn-based. Can you satisfy the pure honer and the pure innovator in the same game? 1v1 Brood War is one of the most honed coin mode games out there. No! Can I just say, the Artosis Rage videos are so fucking funny. There hasn't been a balance patch for decades, but there is use map settings that allow innovator types to create maps that change the rules. Players have created infinite resource maps, zergling only modes, and even this weird metal slug map, which is kind of insane that someone made that. 
Some have even gotten good in these variations, forming entire communities and tournaments around them. The point is, people can play these games while still existing in the larger StarCraft ecosystem, and without affecting the main 1v1 game which has become a homer's paradise now. Oh, okay, they each have a little dude that they're running around. Oh, this is great! It's become a sort of StarCraft gaming platform. Smash also has very flexible rule shaping, but players went the opposite way and turned an innovator's game into a very honable version. But some developers have directly embraced practice and made games to awaken our inner honer with great success. Yeah, being an innovator doesn't, it doesn't have to be scrubby. It also doesn't mean that you don't like honing either. And also, yes, Moss, I was gonna say, that Artosis clip of him smiling is like hilarious. Like I never see, his stream, he's permanently like, actual or real frown, constantly sad. Like he's just always maximum grump. Of course, Hidetaka Miyazaki had to keep this a secret from the marketing department to get his game made. But some Honor games hide its true colors by its very design. What's actually really beautiful about chess is that its honing aspect is hidden to people with no interest studying it. This quiet game that has sat in over 100 million homes has been honed for longer than we've been alive and will be honed after we're not. This was Gerald Should've used the Punch gaming. Planet Thanks uh, for stage. This video was sponsored by Brook Gaming. Lord Brook! Brook makes gaming peripherals like the Universal Fighting Board, <laughs> which lets you use your fight stick on all sorts of different consoles. Thanks to Brook for the sponsor assist, and make sure to check out their products in more detail at brookaccessory.com. I always let the sponsor thing play out because, you know, you got to support Gerald and support sponsors, but Brook's awesome. For years, especially when I traveled all the time, I used a Brook PCB. Highly recommend Brook stuff. They're great. Anyway, yeah, I think that this video covers, you know, a pretty common discussion that we have in fighting games. The struggle between people wanting the games to be a little bit easier for new people to jump into and like the patch culture that goes along with modern fighting games and also looking for lots of valuable, like proven skills that they want to hone over years and years and years and years. There's a lot going on in this video. I think a lot of people will put themselves in the shoes of a honer or an innovator very quickly, particularly the part about like, liking games when they're in the innovative stage and then checking out when the honing becomes a big deal you know i think a lot of people are like that i also agree that innovating will lead to honing you once you innovate and a new thing is created you sort of always or somebody will try to hone whatever the innovative thing is it's just scrubby it's just it's not for them they don't want to do the honing part they want to do the innovative part and then they, they enjoy the game in that stage and not the stage that you do there's a lot of fighting game players that are like notorious they get like mad hype they're like, this game is sick, I love it. And they come up with all kinds of cool stuff. They're like, this is the coolest thing ever. And then like a week or two weeks later, they're gone. You don't see them ever again. And then they're on to the next game. I think most people are a bit of both. Particularly if you like fighting games, you probably do both. A lot of old, grumpy, like, I hate all the new stuff people are not even honers in the same way. Like they play the games, but they don't hone them in the way that like maybe is described in this video where they try to optimize everything about them they just play them some games i know that i'm not going to be a honer like i'm only there for the innovating and some games i'm i know that i would rather watch other people hone it than me but personally i usually do both i can't really fuck with the idea that like oh because the gatlings are narrower there's nothing to hone like what Gatlings were you honing in old Guilty Gear? I mean, you just did, you did certain Gatlings. It's not like it took you like 10 years to figure out, ah, I hit kick and then slash and then H. There are things you can hone within it, sure, but I don't know if I buy the Gatlings being the one that takes forever. I mean, that's the way I did it too. There's like Gatling routes that you would do in different situations. So like if it's on block or hit, I do two, two different Gatling routes, right? The defense against it though, I think is different than just the pure gatling situation after it's it forces you into a similar situation that stride puts you in anyway it's just earlier or later depending on the gatlings you do i don't know it's cool i like it but i don't think that that's something that is like it, it's not a turn off for me maybe it's a turn off for you you can't assert your play like old gg because moves are risky and more rps i i'd be a certain i assert my far slash right into their nether nether realms soul privilege i'd be a certain my behemoth right into their nether realms i'd be a certain my gold lewis 10 frame far slash into their nether realm if more people played it at a beginner level you'd play ac plus r i mean you find you can find newer players for plus r there's a lot of my discord there's a lot in general that still play the game pretty often yeah most modern games have so much patching and like so many things change frequently that 
the honing of it has to be much faster, but also into a shallower extent a lot of times. Plus R is like also not a version that was honed that much. Exert came out, so they were kind of like, all right, well. The timing of it was not great for it to be a honed game, which is why I think a lot of people are really enjoying it now. It's one of those games that like, if you haven't tried it, you can get it on sale for so incredibly cheap that you might as well. Listen. Super Noon has dubbed me the watcher because he says literally every fighting game stream, I'm always there. He's like, I can't escape you. Last night I opened a discord, right? I was like sitting there. It was like two o'clock in the morning. I randomly opened the discord. I see this post. Will it kill? I saw it live and I posted, I am currently not taking submissions. They're flabbergasted that I could see them. You can't get away from me. Do not post will it kills outside of the form. I will find you and I will direct you towards the form. I am the watcher. I see all, you can't escape.